Hello and welcome to Age of Empires 3 Tips and Tricks with me, Interjection. Today's video will focus around how to gather more safely and prevent your settlers from dying, so we will start with the most basic and most effective skill. Skill 1. What is herding? If you send a settler behind a herd of huntable animals, you can shoot the animals towards your town centre. The closer you can collect to your town, the better, as it means you can garrison vulnerable villagers in your town centre more quickly when they're under attack. If you can bring huntables all the way back to your town, it also means newly created settlers will have less far to walk before they start gathering. Whilst herding, it is worth remembering that once huntables have been shot, they will not move again until 12 seconds have passed. Basically, you can only herd every 12 seconds, but if you keep close attention, you should be able to bring you should be able to bring in one or two herds close to your town center before you reach the more fast-paced colonial age part of the game. It is best to just use one settler per herd to bring in huntables in, and to leave that settler gathering from a dead animal whilst waiting for those 12 seconds to pass. Once your opponent reaches the colonial colonial age though, it's probably best to think about bringing those settlers back to your town because your enemy might have military units out soon which could easily kill any stragglers. It's often also worth bringing back any settlers you use to build a forward base as those are just as vulnerable as your hunting settlers. Also, try not to kill any more animals than is necessary because dead animals in Age of Empires 3 actually lose food at a rate of one food per second even when no one is gathering from them. The final things to know about herding are what I call accidental back herding, unfortunate back herding, and anti herding. Accidental back herding is when settlers will shoot a new huntable when they need a fresh one to gather from, and that will cause obviously the entire herd to run in the wrong direction. You can utilize shift clicking to stack up commands to prevent this. If you don't know what shift clicking is though, uh, you can click the annotation on screen now which will take you to a separate Age of Empires 3 tips and tricks video of mine which focuses on that skill. Unfortunate back herding is when the entire herd runs in the wrong direction for no reason. It doesn't happen often, but sometimes, even when you do everything right, this can happen. No one can be sure why it happens, but uh, we can be sure that it has ruined many a GG. Anti-herding is when settlers are used to grief your opponent's herds by shooting them in an inconvenient direction. Uh, for example, shooting them towards your barracks. Anti-herding usually isn't worth the wasted gather time though, and often results in losing the settler you are using to grief your opponent with. Next, we'll take a quick look at the competitiveness of other food sources. It is important to remember that settlers gather food the fastest from huntable animals at a rate of 0.83 food per second. Therefore, to remain competitive, you will need to have safe access to hunts. Even though it might sound safer to gather from berries or even a mill in your base, I wouldn't recommend it. Berries are okay since you don't have to pay for them, but mills are a bad idea as you're essentially investing 400 wood into a much slower place to gather from. Livestock animals are also not a great idea under almost all circumstances unless your name is Azank. They're too risky to train or ship because they are an investment which takes too long to pay off. Having said that though, some players will build livestock pens if they find lots of free animals on the map, in particular cows, since those fatten up to more food than any other livestock animal. A great tip to remember is that when playing on the Great Plains or any map with the Lakota or Cheyenne settlement, you can build a trading post and research a technology costing 150 coin and 150 wood, which ships 12 bison to your home city spawn point. This is always worth it before transitioning onto mills or if you have no safe hunts to gather from. Tip number two, building an outpost on your hunts. Whilst this might sound obvious, a 250 wood investment for a place to garrison vulnerable settlers into is just a no-brainer. Building an outpost on a faraway herd or coin mine will save your settlers' lives should they be under attack. You don't want to be losing settlers since they cost 100 food each and take 25 seconds to train. Losing a settler, therefore, essentially puts you 100 food down and 25 seconds behind your opponent's economy. It's also worth noting that you can herd other packs of animals onto existing outposts to save would. I mean, like, why, why would you... Tip 3. More settler HP. If your strategy involves building a market, it is always worth spending 75 food on the Great Coats upgrade, which grants you 35% more settler hit points. I cannot stress enough how big that is. It is worth the food. The Pioneer shipment increases your settler hit points by 65%, but is usually not worth it since you can build outposts, and if you waste a shipment on Pioneers, you have one less shipment to spend in the Colonial Age which are typically worth 700 resources each at that stage in the game. 
But that brings us to the end of my guide. I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope you find it useful. If you did, please do rate it thumbs up. That really is appreciated. And uh, until next time.